This format is pretty interesting, some people love it, some people hate it, and I've got a bunch of things to say about it. My judgement on it is both objective and subjective, so if you see me using a qualifier, you know I'm just sharing my personal thoughts about it. And of course nothing forces you to agree with everything that I'm saying, you can absolutely disagree. Alright, so first things first, I think we can all agree on the fact that this format is quite diverse. We've got a huge amount of decks running around including the older decks that were there before Duelist Nexus and the new ones. I could literally give you like a list of 20 competitive decks out of the top of my head. But the most popular ones are Kashtira, Pure Lee, Dragon Link, Branded Chimera, Rescue Ace, and Cyber's decks in general. And honestly, I want to say this should make the casual players pretty happy because they're all about diversity. Now, diversity is cool and all, but I think we can also agree on the fact that Kashtira and Pure Lee are still much better slash more popular than the other decks by a long shot. And without a ban list, considering the fact that a lot of players actually owned these decks before, we can expect to see a lot of players continue to play them. So even though it looks like Duelist Nexus changed everything up, it's only on the premise that a ban list takes place. But this video is all about the current format, not a hypothetical one considering the fact that we get a ban list eventually. I mean, the next YCS is in like 3 weeks and we have no idea when we will get a ban list. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. I also want to believe that this format currently rewards deck building way more than the first Kishtira format. You know, the one with Diablosis where you were getting all your zones locked by Shangri-La. Yep, now fun at all. Because of the fact that zone locking is no longer a really big thing, I want to see Kashtira is honestly quite manageable. Now you actually have way more ways of breaking their board than you used to before because Dark Ruler actually takes care of their whole board now. Because you know, back then when Shangri-La was locking your zones, even if you were using Dark Ruler, the effect to lock your zones was still applied even with a negated Shangri-La. Now you only, quote unquote, have to worry about a Rizard, which is obviously extremely broken, but if you can take care of that card, you should be fine. I mean, when you think about it, the average board board is just a Rizard with Fenrir and pretty much nothing else. Which obviously is still pretty good, but at least again, there's so many outs to that. The deck also does not interact with spells and shops really well, so if you got like Evenly or Regeki and stuff like that, you could actually break their whole board. So one thing that I really like about this format is that the best deck, Kashtira, can easily be beat using board breakers instead of just relying on hand traps. You know a format is garbage when you need to play like 12 hand traps to have a fair shot. But instead of playing all the hand traps in the world, you can play cards like Book of Moon, Book of Eclipse, Curry Kara, Kaijus, etc. And another beautiful thing about this format is that a lot of these cards that I just mentioned also have a lot of good overlap against the other good decks. Like for example, against Purely, you could use the Book of Moon and Book of Eclipse to prevent your opponent from going into Experly Noir using the trap card. And if your opponent hard makes the Experly Noir, you can still Curry Kara or Kaiju that shit. And of course, these cards are also good against the other decks. So this format is quite predictable, which means that if you know what you're doing and you know what to expect, which is, again, easy to do because all you have to do is do your freaking homework, you should be rewarded really well. And because of that, you can get away playing pretty much any deck that you really want to. And of course, this is the reason why there is so much variety. It's because regardless of what you play, if you play the right cards, you're fine. You're only screwed if you play like zero hand shops and zero board breakers. Every single time we get a format similar to this one, I always say the same thing. I'm way more scared of like a really good player playing a rogue deck than like an average player playing the best deck. Again, everybody knows what the best deck is and how to beat it, so it's really not even that scary anymore. And it's not like Kashtira is making 7 negates or if you're... Again, this is just how I personally feel about this format. But I think it does open up the door to a lot of discovery and options. I'm sure the first few YCSs will be completely unsolved and people will play random decks. But as we progress further into the format, people will start figuring it out and everybody's gonna start playing the same deck. And then everything will be super boring and people will start complaining. And when you think about it, that's gonna be pretty much the exact same thing as what happened last year with Tier Laments and Sprite. Started off being really exciting and really fresh and then became kinda stale after we got Ishizu Tier. But when Tier Laments first came out, people weren't even complaining that much about the deck. And hopefully we will be able to dodge stagnation with a high quality ban list. We really need one. Unfortunately, we've got no control over that. Anyways, that's all I had for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts about this format in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.